Namaste tribe, I'm Victoria. I'm so happy to be here and be able to offer these online classes to you guys. Um, today we're gonna be exploring the first chakra, which is all about your feelings of family, of safety, of security, and of just feeling grounded and um, inside of your body, which I know during these times where everything is so in flux, um, that the sense of that we are actually really are okay and that mother nature is doing its thing, the trees are blooming, um, life is continuing just like we are continuing, um, is really important to stay grounded and to just know that. So enjoy. Alright, so we'll start with child's pose. Um, let the knees grow wide, maybe the big toes touch. And then let your arms be nice and wide today so you really feel a sense of expansion and softening in the shoulder blades. Take your forehead from side to side and let your neck gently relax. And then start to come into a deep ujjayi breath. In through the nose, out through the nose, with a slight restriction in the back of the throat that makes the breath sound like a sexy Darth Vader. And then as you start to allow yourself to soften the belly, right? allow yourself to release the abs and just let the belly hang through the thighs and just notice if the breath becomes a little bit more available in the belly. Right? Deep the breath, you can just allow it to seep in a little bit deeper. And then allow yourself to come to this intention that you are here right now, really present in your own body and that this moment is the one moment that we can count on. And so really enjoy this breath. And then start to gently pull the belly into the spine and up towards your heart, finding a gentle uni and a bandha. And now see if the breath now starts to become more available to the back of the body, to the kidneys, the adrenals, the middle back, as the back of the lungs have the larger lobes, right? And so the breath can actually move into the back body a little bit more. So see if you can really start to use this yogic power to direct your breath. See if perhaps you can maintain a gentle unyana bandha that does not restrict the breath, but that does allow the breath to move a little deeper into the back body today. And then start to press your hands into the ground so that you feel your hands grounding, you feel your knees, your shins, your feet, you know that you are here. Breathe into that. And then start to gently press into your hands to come onto your hands and knees, finding a tabletop pose. Stack your hands right underneath your shoulders and your knees under your hips. And as you inhale, arch your spine, lift up for cow pose. And then as you exhale, chin to chest, round the spine as you push the mat away. Heart reaches through the arms, opens up the front of the chest, collarbone spread apart. And then as you exhale, chin into the chest, the back of the heart opens, space between the shoulder blades is created. Keep it going like this for another two or three rounds, really allowing yourself to breathe in and become intimate with your breath today. Notice how your spine when it's undulating, opening up. And then there's no rush, but in the next breath or so, start to come back to a neutral spine. Have a gentle pull of the belly to the spine so you feel this sense of strength and support that is our first chakra, it's our root. And then look at your hands and spread them evenly. That often means bringing the thumbs in slightly. And tuck the toes, lift your hips, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Right away, let the head drop. Right, let the head drop, let the thoughts drop off. Right, imagine them just falling out the front of your head up to your back. Even if it's just for an hour, allow your practice to hold your thoughts in that space for you. And then come high up on your tippy toes and take your heels over to the right. And then bend the right knee and keep pressing through the right arm so it doesn't collapse. Feel the nice big stretch opening through the left side of the body. See if you can direct your breath into that left hip, left IT band. On an inhale, come back to center. As you exhale over to the left, bending the left knee gently. 
You could even look under the right armpit if you want to get a little bit more of a twist sensation here. And then again, allow yourself to direct the breath into the right side of the body, focusing on what you're feeling, the sensations of the legs awakening. As you come back to center, stay high up on the tippy toes and roll forward into plank, long and strong, belly to spine. And then push the mat away and feel every fiber of your being turn on. Right from your heels to your shoulders, one straight line. And then think of the upper back spreading apart so the shoulder blades come away and you start to feel even the triceps engage. Shift forward a little bit more and then either lower the knees or lower the whole body to one in one piece down to the ground. Coming onto your belly. Notice your entire body touching the earth. And then push away for a baby cobra as the heart seeps, seeps forward, press into the feet, stay here. Use your feet so much that you can lift your hands by your shoulders and flow. Allow your breath to grow bigger into the belly that lifts you up just a little bit more, finding a gentle back bend. On an exhale, lower the hands and the chin, tuck the toes, downward facing dog, as you lift the hips high to the sky. Notice the connection of your feet and your hands to the earth. And then use that to pull the belly into the spine and start to feel a sense of lightness through the hips. Starting to take a slow walk to the front of the mat, there's no rush to get there. I want you to feel the sensation of your feet touching the earth, your heels pressing down. When do you have to lift onto your fingertips to make space for the feet to come forward? At the top of the mat, find ragdoll. Separate the feet, hip distance apart, grab opposite elbows, Give the elbows just a gentle tug downward towards gravity. Pull the belly to the spine and soften your knees, chest to thighs. So be sweet with the hamstrings here in the beginning. It's early in the morning. It's early in your practice, right? These larger muscles take longer to warm up, but we'll definitely get there. Start to gently release the arms and let them dangle. Imagine that the bones in your body, right? The most stable part of you, the bones are just hanging out, letting go, releasing. And then start to heel toe the feet in towards each other until the big toes touch. Right, and feel the sensation of the two toes touching each other and how the skin feels against each other. Pull the belly to the spine and start to slowly roll up one vertebra at a time. Let the head be the very last thing to arrive so that the heart arrives before the ego. Once the head does arrive, roll the shoulders up, back, and down and let the palms of your hands face forward and Tadasana, the mountain pose. And then close your eyes for a moment and just root yourself into the earth. Imagine that from the four corners of your feet and your ten toes, you have roots like a tree growing down into the earth. And that your fingers become like roots as well, reaching down deep into the majesty of Mother Earth. Right? There's this sense of connection to something that's bigger than us. Feel the crown of the head reaching up towards the sky, connecting you to sky and to heaven, to everything that's light and everything that's above us. As you inhale, reach your arms to the sky, take a deep breath in. As you exhale, bring your hands to heart center and let your thumbs come into your chest and feel your own beautiful heart beating. Allow yourself to come back to this intention of being rooted and grounded so that we become the eye in the storm, so that even though everything around us is in flux, we feel a sense of calm that comes from within. And then we can be that for our community and our loved ones. Three ohms to set this intention free. Inhale. Breathe in, down dog, breath out. 
Roll forward, plank pose like a wave. Shift forward for chaturanga or to the ground, yogi's choice. Up dog or cobra, whatever you're ready for, yogis. And then exhale, down dog, hips high. Inhale, right leg high, heel up, toes down. Exhale, look forward between your hands. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step forward, release the head at the top of the mat. Rising up, big breath in, reach up as you root down. Exhale, forward fold, and do the breath out. Halfway lift as you bring the shoulder blades together, long spine. Exhale, pop the mat. Left leg reaches back. Heart lifts, breathe in. Down dog, breath out. Rolling forward is a beautiful breath in. Chaturanga, you sip the breath out. Up dog or cobra, inhale. Down dog, exhale completely. Inhale, left leg to the sky. Exhale, it forward between your hands. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step forward, release the head. Rising up, big breath in. Reach your energy to the sky. Exhale, forward fold, feel your legs. Right leg reaches back right away. Down dog, exhale. Rolling forward, breath in. Chaturanga, slowly sip the breath out. Try not to grab the breath for up dog, but just let it in. And then exhale, down dog, hips high. Breathe in. Breathe out. Step the feet forward two, three inches. Even when we jump forward, there's a sense of grounding through the hands. Think of almost gripping the mat. Bend the knees, chest to thighs, half step or float to the front of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift to lengthen. Exhale, forward fold to soften. Rise up, big breath in, feel your feet into the ground. Exhale, forward fold, bow to your strong legs. Left leg reaches back. Down dog, exhale. Roll forward, plank pose. Chaturanga, slow the breath here. Up dog, breathe in, long neck. Exhale, down dog, hips high. Breathe in. Right, breathe out. Walking the feet forward two, three inches. Big toes touch, so feel that. Bend the knees, chest to thighs. That gives you strength and momentum. Look forward, and then half step or float. Inhale, halfway lift. Let the breath in. Exhale, let it go. Rise up, big breath in. Reach up and look up. Let's pause here for a moment. Do your feet ground, open your arms wide into a V. Right, ready for this intention to come in. Sit down, Utkatasana, chair pose. Squeeze the inner thighs together, but energetically, the heels are reaching away from each other, making space for the lower back. See if you can get your thighs parallel to the ground today, so we're really working the legs and the strength that we have that we don't even know how strong we are. Right, so even here when you know and you can feel the legs are burning, there's a fire that's rising into the belly, that's warming up the heart, you can feel it in your cheeks. Ground into the strength of your legs and commit to being here a little bit longer than you actually desire to be. So sit a little bit lower and then smile, right? Smile in the face of your strength, right? In the face of being challenged. Sit a little bit lower. And then as you inhale, reach up and back for a slight back bend, bowing to each other's strength. You can straighten the legs. And then exhale to forward fold over the legs, bowing to the strength. Halfway lift as you breathe in. Palm the mat, hop or step back, chaturanga, if you're hopping. Up dog, shine the heart forward. Exhale, down dog, release the breath. Let the head hang. Breathe in. Breathe out. Right, start to already feel this sense of electricity roaming through the legs. Right, really starting to awaken the circulation of the legs. You can feel the back of the hamstrings are a little bit more open than they were at the beginning of class. Inhale, right leg high in the sky, breathe in. Exhale, cheetah into your warrior one. So you're lifting the knee into the chest to step the foot forward. Spin the big heel down and lift the arms to the sky. Feel an extension through the pinky side of your hand as the thumbs face back. And then find the back heel, right? So that the back heel becomes the battery for the pose and the opportunity for the heart to start to move forward. On an exhale, lower your hands to the ground. Step back for plank on your inhale. Chaturanga, your exhale. Up dog, breathe in. Down dog, breath out, hips high. Inhale, left leg high to the sky. Exhale, cheetah into your warrior one. So strength and grounding. Both arms lift to the sky. Energy is moving from the hips all the way to the fingertips. See if you can 
feel that extension. The back heel is grounded and feels stronger even than the front leg. On an exhale, hands to the ground. Step back, plank pose to breathe in. Chaturanga, an opportunity to breathe slowly. Up dog, inhale, down dog, exhale. Stepping the feet forward to three inches, big toes touch. Bend the knees, half step or float to the front of the mat. Halfway lift to breathe in. Release on the breath out. Rising up, Urdhva Hastasana, big breath in. Sit down, Utkatasana, chair pose, Ahinda strength. On an exhale, forward fold, empty your breath out. Inhale, halfway lift to prepare. Palm the mat, hop or step back, vinyasa is yours. Up dog, inhale, down dog, exhale. Really getting a rhythm for the breath. Right leg to the sky, breathe in. Cheetah to your warrior one, fold arms to the sky. Big breath in, find the back leg. As you exhale, hands to the ground. Take your vinyasa, mindful in body and breath, and I'll meet you in down dog. Let down dog be a sense of coming home to your breath and to your heartbeat. Breathing in, breathing out. Inhale, left leg to the sky. Cheetah to your warrior one. Both arms to the sky. Big breath in. Right. Find a new place for a breath here. Hands to the ground as you exhale. Vinyasa, and I'll meet you in down dog. I really allow the vinyasa to be a place that feels like you can come back to the intention of moving with body and breath. Stepping the feet forward two, three inches, big toes touch. Bend the knees, half step or float. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to forward fold. Rising up, big breath in, reach up, look up. And then sit down, utkatasana, and we'll really feel the legs here again. Right, the legs are burning, you know that you're alive, right? Relish that moment, that feeling of strength, and then sit into it a little bit more. This time on an inhale, rise up, big breath in, reach up and back for a slight back bend. As you exhale, forward fold, empty the breath out. Halfway lift, breathe in. Chaturanga, the breath out. You can always step back. Inhale for up dog. Exhale, down dog. Close your eyes here for a moment and just feel. Right? Feel your energy. Where is it? Right? Where do you feel that sense of electricity of prana? Is it the legs, the belly, the arms, the head? Right? Know that your breath is the vehicle for that energy. And so you can use the breath to direct that energy to wherever you need it most today. All right, let's play. Inhale, right leg high. Mountain climber prep. Tap the upper right arm. Inhale, back three point. Stay here for a moment. Squeeze your inner thighs together. Heel up and toes down. Feel the connection of both thighs, even though they're not touching, but energetically they are, and they're even out the hips. Exhale for cheetah as you bring it right into your heart source. Step it forward, warrior two. Spin the back heel down, and right away, expansion, the arms open up. The fingertips are the extension of your heart, so keep reaching them out. You see where your physical body ends, but your energetic body extends out four feet in all directions. So take up that energy today, or that space. Reach forward, up and back for peaceful warrior. Supported side angle, right elbow to the right thigh, and then the left arm reaches over the head. See if you can spin the right pinky in towards you a little bit more than the other knee. And then see if you can feel that through the extension of the left leg, right? This is that side angle that we're feeling here, that 45 degree angle from the left pinky toe to the left pinky finger. Up and back, it's Peaceful Warrior on a breath in. Cartwheel your hands down, vinyasa is yours, strong in your breath, and I'll meet you in down dog. Right, there's always the opportunity to skip the vinyasa if you need to and meet in down dog for an extra couple of breaths. Inhale, left leg high. Mountain climber prep. Think of swinging the knee out to meet the tricep. Inhale, back three point. Squeeze the inner thighs together, right? Find that connection, hips are even, heel up, toes down. Exhale, cheetah into your warrior two. Rear vinyasana two. Spin the back heel down, let the back leg work for you. If not, the front leg feels overtaxed. Right, so the edge 
bridge of the right foot is really sealing into the back of the mat. See, from there you can bend the left knee a little bit more. And then reach forward, up and back for peaceful warrior like you're scooping energy. Extended side, uh, supported side angle on the breath out, elbow to back. Now it's the right arm that's reaching over. Turn the pinky in, that's itching. The head is looking up, you can maybe feel like just the profile is up to the sky, the profile of your beautiful face. And then find the back leg. Mula Bandha, pelvic floor lift so you feel supported from the inside out. On an inhale, this peaceful warrior, breathe in. Cartwheel your hands down. Mindful vinyasa on the breath out. Of this expansion of warrior two, you get to take up so much space. 
up and back peaceful warrior breathe in extended side angle on the breath out see if you can find a way for your hands to touch the ground so that you feel more grounded that often means just bending the left knee more or you can grab a block if you're home you can grab a book and then turn the right pinky finger in towards you, yes. And then breathe the whole side angle, right from the right foot to the right pinky finger. Pull the belly to the spine for peaceful warrior, up and back as you breathe in. Parallel the feet, start pose through the center, moment to even up. Exhale, warrior two to the back of the house. There's a new perspective, a new way of seeing things. Up and back, peaceful warrior, breathe in. Stay leaning back and straighten the front leg. Power through the back leg as you slowly come into triangle pose. Notice here if you start to lock the knee out and right away, use the quad and the strength of your muscles to hold the legs straight and strong. Look up and past your fingertips. Breathe a little bit bigger. See if you can access the back of the heart, that kidney space by pulling the belly in and up gently. Up and back, it's peaceful, warrior, breathe in. Peaceful takes us to the front of the mat, an opportunity to dance your way there. All right, really make it you. Right into your half moon, there's a pushing off of the back foot, right, a moment of unknown. And then flex the right toes right away. Think of the back heel pressing into the imaginary wall that comes up to meet you for support. Look up and pass your right fingertips. Breathe a little bit bigger. Start to bend the standing leg as you slowly come into Peaceful Warrior again. Up and back. Cartwheel your hands down. Right hand down, Vashistasana, side plank. Stacking the left foot on top of the right. Right away, lift the hips high to the sky. Right, so you can feel the oblique starting to kick in. Left leg lifts any amount. Lift it a little higher. Rock stars, you step in behind the heart and hips lift to the sky. Three legged up, left leg high to the sky. Take it away, it's yours. If you want it, I'll meet you in down dog. Okay. There's something really beautiful about knowing where we're going, so we're gonna repeat that and add on to the end of it. Right, so now there's this opportunity here that we're gonna move perhaps a little bit faster, like one breath, one movement, but you know where you're going, right? So just trust your feet. Inhale, right leg high. Cheetah into your warrior two. Open it up right away. Up and back, it's peaceful, you found the legs. Extended side angle, perhaps you explore a bind or a half bind here, if you desire a little bit more of a shoulder opening. Right, I've said it many times, I have a very strange relationship with binds. One day I love them, one day I don't. And so I try it and then I let it go if it doesn't feel right today. Release it for a peaceful warrior to reach up and back. Parallel the feet, take flying warrior to the center. As you exhale, warrior two to the back of the house. Up and back, scoop that energy, peaceful warrior. Straighten the front leg, breathe in. Triangle pose on the breath out, breathe in. Back of the heart opening, front of the heart opening, legs are getting stronger. On an inhale, it's peaceful warrior, breathe in. Peaceful takes us to the front of the house, spinning the heels to get there. Right into your half moon as you push up. Right, find the stability in your half moon first. Then we'll explore Chapasana. Right, start to bend the left knee, grab the left foot or ankle, and then kick back so the strength of the pose starts to stabilize the pose. Opportunity to look up still and think of your hip almost like a half bow pose of your hips and your heart reaching towards the current wall. Gently extend the leg without it flinging, coming back into your half moon. Bend both knees, come to the front of your mat, bow to your efforts, release your head. Rise up, Urdhva Hastasana, big breath in. Body stretches, so does the lungs. Hands to your heart center. Settle back into your heart and your breath. Stay your feet ground. As the eyes flutter open, right foot lifts, tree pose. Take the right foot to the inside of the thigh or the inside of the calf. As long as it's not on the knee, you're perfect. 
And then think of the right knee reaching to the right a little bit more. Pull the belly to the spine and close the front of the ribs. Allow the right knee to, or the right hip to lower slightly and lift out of the left leg. Arms reach to the sky, breathe in. Find the rootedness from the left leg to allow the arms like branches in the wind to move from side to side. Right, so that even in our stability, there's a softness and a sense of flowing. Right, that we can move with the air and with the water. Just float the foot off of your thigh, but keep the knee out to the right and grab Yogi Toe Lock. Let your left arm reach to the left, be in lead of the right heel reaching to the right. Utita Asta Paragustasana B. See, perhaps you can look past your left fingertips. Even if you fall, it doesn't matter, yogis. Right, you're growing your practice. Cosmic curtsy, right foot behind the left, bowing to your efforts. Lindsay's favorite. <laughs> Hands to the ground, sciatic stretch. Right, the sciatic nerve is the biggest nerve in the body that I know of, or at least of the leg. And you can really feel it in the back leg. So the back leg can be as straight as you can, as, as it can be, but the front knee can definitely give, so the front knee can bend. And the pinky toes coming together makes it really beneficial. And then breathe, right? And see if you can send your breath into the back leg and really feel the stretch. In yoga, we're not just stretching muscles and, and fascia, connective tissue, but we're also stretching nerves, and it's a really important part of the practice. All right, we'll take it into a cross ankle curl. So walk your hands forward and come high up on your tippy toes. Right, this will allow your knees to spread, and then climb the knees into the armpits, the armpits into the knees. It's definitely a little puzzle piece here. And then the bottom foot will begin to lift the top foot off of the mat as you lean forward, breathe. And then when you're ready, half step or float, vinyasa is yours if you want it, I'll meet you in down dog. Breathing in, breathing out, let the head go. Feel your body, feel your legs, feel your hips, pull the belly to the spine. Feel all the places that you're connected to the earth. Inhale, left leg high. Cheetah into your warrior two, so really bring it in to step it forward. Right away, it's up and back, peaceful warrior, breathe in. Extended side angle on the breath out, so we're really using the breath to find the movement. Perhaps you explored a half or full bind. Whatever you did on one side, stay even, or at least try to stay even. Sometimes one side feels really different than the other. Keep spinning the back foot to the ground. Keep using that as an anchor for the front leg to feel supported. When you're ready to release it, it's Peaceful Warrior that allows you to feel that freedom. Parallel the feet. Start pose, breathe in. Exhale, Warrior Two to the back of the house. Up and back, Peaceful Warrior. Stay here, straighten the front leg, triangle pose on the breath out. Again, find the same variation that you found on the other side. This pose has to be in my top five, right? Because it opens the legs, it opens the heart, it just does so much. Breathe in. Rebend the knees, peaceful to the back of the house. That takes us to peaceful to the front of the house. Right? Nobody moves like you, nobody breathes like you. Right into your half moon. Find the stability in half moon first. Right? So feel really grounded in the standing leg. Then once you've established that, bend the right knee and grab the right foot or ankle. The kicking back in my practice allowed me to find even more stability. I'm still even here thinking about the inner thighs squeezing towards each other energetically. Pull the belly to the spine and gaze high. Breathe a little bigger. Start to gently release the back leg. Keep the toes flexed for support. Bend both knees. Come to the front of your mat and bow to your efforts. Bow to your strength. Rising up, Urdhva Hastasana. Big breath in, look up, connect back to your intention. Exhale your hands to your heart, bring it in, bring it back home. Find your breath. When the eyes flutter open, it's the left knee that lifts for tree pose, for sasana. Right, absolutely use your hand to grab your foot and place it where you want it to go. 
And then once you find that stability, you let the right thigh press into the left foot as much as the left foot is pressing into the right thigh. Let your knee reach out to the left a little bit more. Lower the left hip and reach out of the right leg as the arms rise. Find a stability that comes from the midline. Perhaps the arms open. Perhaps here we gaze up to test our balance, to see things from a new perspective. Float the tree and grab Yogi Tolak. At the same time, start to reach the right arm. The right arm is the leverage for the left heel. So think of jazz hands in the left side hands. Yeah, so that energy allows the left heel to reach up. Cosmic courtesy when you're ready. Left foot steps behind the right, bowing into your effort. Doesn't matter what happens. Hands to the ground, sciatic stretch. Right, the only thing that we can control really in our practice, or that we can be consistent, I should say, in our practice, is our efforts. Right, because for me, definitely one day, my feet wanna float into a headstand, no big deal. And then some days my feet are like, I don't think so, right? And so just honor that, that every day is different. But the efforts can be consistent. Starting to breathe into the back leg, feel that stretch of the sciatic nerve, should feel nice. Really grounding. Right, that softness in the front knee reminds you that you're, you're soft and strong at the same time. And then we'll play with the crossed ankle curl again, right? Allow yourself to be really playful in this. Right, the knees bend and the high, high up on the tippy toes so the knees can spread out wide. That's probably the hardest part of the pose. And then the back bottom foot works a little bit more than the top foot. It lifts up. Mm -hmm. That's it, Jane the guide. Huh? Mm -hmm. Breathe. And then when you're ready, half step or float. It's all yours. I'll meet you in down dog. Breathe in. <sighs> Come back to home. Maybe a sigh out. Just let something go. Right? Notice the warmth of the body. Notice what you're creating here in your practice. The sense of energy. The sense of rootedness, of connectedness. Right? To all beings everywhere. Let's change it up a little bit. Inhale, right leg high. Twist the cheetah. Tap your upper left arm. Inhale, back three point. Step it forward, crescent lunge. So back here will stay lifted for this one. Hand, both arms to the sky, take a deep breath in. The back leg is straight, the front knee is bent. Squeeze your inner thighs energetically towards each other. Notice that I'm using a lot of the same cues as they work for a lot of those same poses, or, a lot, or all the different poses. Now pull the belly to the spine, lean forward for warrior three. Let the chest lift the back foot. So the leaning forward, the leverage allows the back foot to lift. You can wing the arms back or reach them forward for more of a challenge. Stork pose, left knee into the chest. Good, grab the outside of your left foot with your right hand or the knee, right? We're gonna come into this revolved variation here, a big toe hold C. As you extend the leg forward, the left arm reaches back. The gaze will go back towards the left hand. Now the left arm will reach over your head, grab the foot with both hands. You'll cross the hands at the wrists. See if you can bow forward for a standing forward fold. Very difficult pose. You might fall out. Time to come back in if you want to. Start to gently rebend the knee, coming back into stork pose. Breathe in. Flex the left toes. Both feet to the ground, Utkatasana. Mm. Chair feels good after standing on one leg for so long, right? So we can even be grateful for Utkatasana here. Breathe in. Bring your hands to heart center. Press them so deep into each other that you make a temple at your heart space. Elbow to elbow, one straight line. As you exhale, twist to the right. Left elbow to the outside of the left knee. You might even be able to work the armpit to the outside of the right knee. For a moment, look down at your knees and see if they're in line. It often means that the left hip needs to reach back gently. Mm -hmm. And then start to squeeze the inner thighs towards each other. Start to magnetize even the hips towards each other. Create stability in the lower body and then freedom to rotate in the upper body. Breathe. Breathe a little bigger. Opportunity for side crow here. So if you want to fly, you get a little bit lower, hands come to the ground. You 
chaturanga, the arms, lean forward and into them, and then any variation in the legs that you desire. It's often more difficult to stay in the twisted chair, so know that. And then when you're ready, forward fold and empty the breath out. Good, rise up, stretch the body, big breath in, reach up, look up. And then exhale, forward fold, empty the breath right back out. Halfway lift, breathe in. Chaturanga, the breath out, hopper step. Up dog, inhale, down dog, exhale. This is home, breathe it in. Inhale, left leg high. Twist the cheetah, determined to touch the upper right arm. Inhale, back three point. Crescent on the step forward, right? A light step, really being in control here at the practice of where your feet land. Find the back leg and then start to squeeze the inner thighs towards each other. Even the hips feel like magnets one into the other. Pull the belly to the spine for warrior three. Hands by your sides so feel like wings. Arms out in front of you, but more challenging, right? It changes the center of your balance. Stork pose, right knee comes into the chest. Left hand to the outside of the left foot, or you can simply hold on to the knee. Extend the leg forward and reach your right arm back. Gaze at the right fingertips, but move the side slowly. And then squeeze the inner thighs towards each other. Pull the belly to the spine. Right arm reaches to grab the foot. Standing forward fold is an exploration. You can keep the knee any amount of bend. Just explore. Come back to start pose. Lift your arms to the sky, breathe in. On an exhale, settle both feet to the earth. Notice how your breath settles. Utkatasana, chair pose. Right, the feet ground are breath ground. Bring your hands to heart center, create that temple. And then on an exhale, twist to the left. Right elbow or right armpit to the outside of the left knee. So I'll actually grab my leg, my left leg, and really work the armpit there. And then lower the butt lower than the heart. Right, see if you can get the butt lower than the heart so the heart becomes in charge of the pose. And then notice that the breath wants to be slightly held in a twist and dig for a deeper breath. Dig for that consistent ujjayi pranayama. Another breath here, and then if you're ready, taking flight into a side crow. Okay, so for our side crow, the fingers will all point in the same direction. Chaturanga the arms, and then flex the toes, even open up, yeah, between the toes, so you get lighter in the legs. When you're ready, a forward fold is a release of that. Let it go. Rise up to stretch the body, Urdhva Hastasana. Big breath in. As you exhale, forward fold and empty out. Good, inhale, halfway lift. A little bit different than a vinyasa here. Exhale, forward fold. Left leg reaches back. Straighten both legs, but keep the back heel lifted and let the head drop in towards the right knee. So it's a long stance, pyramid pose, Parsvottanasana. The front knee, if the hamstring feels really tight, can be any amount of bend. Breathe. Right, see if you can feel the actual circulation moving in to your right thigh. And then step the left foot forward slightly and out to the left, coming into a true pyramid pose. Mm -hmm. Good, and now start to feel the back leg root. And then use the back heel rooting down to take a little bit of the weight off of the right leg. Think of your right hip reaching back towards the plants and your left hip reaching forward towards your heart. Keeping your left hand grounded or bringing it closer to your right foot, lift your right arm to the sky, revolve triangle pose, breathe in. If you have a block at home, that's often helpful here. Yes, and you see how Lindsay's using her water bottle, so you can use a water bottle, you can use a block, a uh, book, Right, so get creative with props at home. Look up and pass your right fingertips. And then keep the arm lifted, but look down. 
and walk your left hand forward to lift your left leg, revolved half moon pose. Flex the left toes and squeeze your inner thighs together. So really staying rooted through the strength of the standing leg. Keep the hands the way they are, kundalini with a twist. Right, left knee comes behind the right, and now you can revolve even more using the knees softening to find a little bit more opening in the chest. Sit all the way down into your revolved spinal twist, or seated spinal twist. So the right leg should be on top, right hand behind you, left arm to the sky, make space for your twist, and then as you exhale, left elbow to the outside of the right. I'm not quite as warm as you guys are, but we'll see what happens. All right, so from the twist, we're going to really focus on keeping our head aligned with our heart, right? So that we're really twisting the whole body together, not just the neck. And we worked on this in the last online class that we did, so let's continue to work on it because it's definitely the type of pose that takes some time and some practice. Now from here, we're gonna come into a side crow or a variation of side crow with eagle legs. So the bottom foot, I'm gonna step it down to the ground for a moment to lift my butt up towards the sky, right? I'm gonna turn to the back of my mat and chaturanga my arms. I'll lean forward and then the back legs are already in eagle position. I'll spread the toes, maybe extend the legs. You can also keep them bent. And then I'll land back into my seated spinal twist. The smile like nothing ever happened. Yeah? So let's try that. Let's try that here, and then let's try that at home as well. Right? Know that there's just two options. Trying or not trying. Right? There's no succeeding or not succeeding. It's just what can happen. Right? Maybe it happens. Maybe it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Be playful. That's it, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Squeeze. Mm -hmm. And then sit back down. All is well, we're still alive, right? <laughs> Counter twist to the opposite side. Let your forehead touch the ground in a moment of giving your practice back to the earth. Hands come, come back to center, feet in front of you, hands behind you, altar. Become the altar of your own practice, the altar of your devotion. Open up your mouth, take out your tongue, lion's breath. Ha! Again, louder. Ha! Yes. And then hips down, cross the shins, hop or step back. Vinyasa is yours if you want it, and I'll meet you in down dog. Ooh, that feels good. All right. Down dog's where it's at. Inhale, left leg, high. Step it forward. Straighten both legs, coming into that long stance pyramid pose. Let the head drop. And really allow yourself to bow here to the strength of your legs. Right? They take you everywhere that you need to go. Right? Solid legs that are always underneath you. Breathe, feel, explore your breath. And then we'll step the right foot forward just a little bit to come into pyramid pose, Prajnatanasana. And I also would like to take it out to the right a little bit, so it's a little bit wider and you get a little bit more of those even hips. There's a gentle pulling of the belly to the spine that uni and is always present or slightly present if possible. And then again here, try not to lock the front knee out, but use the quad strength to keep the legs straight. Straight. Press through the back heel. Right? Don't let the front leg do all of the work. This time it'll be the right hand that stays down as the left arm lifts to the sky. Revolve triangle pose. The hardest part about the pose here is keeping the hips even. So keep squeezing the inner thighs towards each other. Revolve the heart, look up, breathe in. Right, so that even in the awkward shapes we can find our breath, right? That's what this yoga is all about. We twist ourselves up into these little pretzel shapes so that maybe if we can breathe in a really awkward position on our mat, that we can just keep breathing in a really awkward position in our lives. Walking your right hand forward, coming into your revolved half moon. So the arm should walk forward, I would say at least a foot, and then squeeze the inner thighs towards 
towards each other and really flex the right foot. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze into the midline as you look up and past your left fingertips. Keep the hands as they are, revolved kundalini. The right knee comes behind the left, both, both knees bent. Notice that that allows the heart to swing open into the twist that much more. And then bring it down to the earth. Right? And just notice when you sit what that feels like. It feels really good. Left hand behind you, right arm to the sky. As you exhale, twist. Good. And I'll give you one more demo from the opposite direction just to see if that's helpful. So it's, to me, the hardest part often for side pro is the twist itself which is what's nice about coming into it from this position because we're already nice and twisted. So the bottom foot lifts me up, right? I press it into the earth. Then I try to run with the arms to the back of my mat. I lean forward and then the legs begin to float because the chest is leveraging the feet to extend or you can keep them bent. A little bit of a tighter position gives you just a little bit perhaps more control. So let's try it one more time on the side, and then try it at home. And be really playful when you fall, because I fell about probably a thousand times before I got that too. Yeah, keeping that connection of the elbow to the hip is the way to go. Yes, open up the toes even. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jane, that's how you play. <laughs> so close. And then land again. Oh. And then again, bow to the opposite opening up, bowing to the ground, to Mother Earth herself. Coming back to the center, both feet forward, both hands behind you, alter it again. Right? Come back to your intention and place your intention on your altar. Take a deep breath in, lion's breath. Ha! One more time. Ha! And this time as the hips settle, lower your whole back on. And allow yourself to soften up here. Let Mother Earth receive you. Right, one of my teachers describes gravity, right, which is always there to catch us, as the way that Mother Earth loves us. It's how she keeps us close to her. Bring your knees into your chest, give them a good squeeze. They've done a lot of work for you in this class, on this day, and every day. So just love them, right? Hug them like something you really love and adore. Those strong legs. And then feet to the ground, let's set up for bridge pose. So I think I'm sorry, Gasana. Feet about hip distance, yep. You can start to lift the hips when you're ready. Perhaps doing that on an exhale. And then think of pressing into the inseam of your foot so the knees stay pointing forward. Lift the hips by taking the hands behind your back maybe shimming the shoulder blades towards each other. Press your triceps down and see if you can lift your hips a little higher. Mm -hmm. Good. And then release the hands and bring them right to your waist so the elbows are in close to your body and see if you can lift up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta really work them under there. Right? But that really shows you the potential here for your bridge pose. As the elbows and the triceps press down, now you have even more structure to lift up. Breathe in. It's like little robot arms here on your side. Yeah, breathing in. And then you can actually release slightly the glutes here, which is difficult to do without this type of support. Let's take one more deep breath. You really feel the belly rise and fall here. And then on an exhale, take your slow, sweet time to come back to the earth, right? Release gently. Feel every fiber of your feet being touching back down. Bring one hand to your heart, bring one hand to your belly. Close your eyes and feel what happens, right? These asanas are medicine, right? So what happens? Where did that medicine go? Feel it, right? Perhaps in the heart or the belly, maybe it's the legs. It'll be different for everyone. There's no right or wrong. Hand by your side, let's come into one more bridge, right? So I showed you a couple of options, which is hands behind the back. I showed you hands to your waist, right? So you take the one that works.
works for you today. Perhaps you explore something totally different. All right, breathe in. Breathe out. See if you can find the four corners of your feet here, even the big toes. Yeah. That changes everything. And then again, on an exhale, release slowly to the earth. One hand to your heart, one hand to your belly. Construct the breast. Take your feet wide, but your knees together. So feet as wide as the mat, knees together. Feel your lower back open, so you can breathe sweetly into the lower back. Release any excess prana that might have accumulated there during that heart opener. And then bring your hands back to the earth. Feet hip distance apart, or maybe even a little closer than that. We'll pigeon toe the toes slightly, and we'll set up for wheel. Urdhva Dhanurasana, also known as Chakrasana in some lineages, right? Which I love to think of it as Chakrasana, which is like rainbow pose, right? Because the whole body just makes this beautiful rainbow all of your chakras to the sky. Go ahead and lift up when you're ready. Or if you're not ready, don't lift up. Maybe do another bridge, right? Bridge is a beautiful opportunity to explore deeper. Right? If you come into bridge, maybe you do one leg up and then the other. You know, there's different variations of bridge. Yeah. This is really good, right? Because not sometimes you don't want to come into a wheel. And that's beautiful, right? Acknowledge and respect your body. All right. We'll do three wheels here in one by bending the elbows and letting the head tap the ground, also known as a yogi pusha, and then lift. That's it, Jane. Do it with your breath. And if you're not ready for three and one is your max, then that's beautiful. Right? Allow yourself to laugh at your ego when it starts to get all like, oh, I should be doing that same thing that they're doing. Like, no, you shouldn't, right? It's all good. When you are ready to come down, tuck the chin in and lower with as much grace as you came up. So lowering coming out of the poses should be an enjoyable process. One hand to your heart, one hand to your belly, construct the breast. Allow the lower back to release. So when the knees come together, the lower back spreads open. And direct your breath there. And then with your hands, notice all the energy at the front of the body. It's very palpable in the back bend for the heart openers that the energy moves into the heart and you can actually have a bigger heartbeat. And then windshield wipe with the knees back and forth a couple of times, just allowing a sense of softness of gravity to take over. And then the next time that the knees reach to the right, let them be to the right in that same staggered position. You can take your arms out into a T or you can cactus and you'll gently look over your left shoulder. So this is different than spinal twists. It's really working more of the hip flexor opening and also the quad on the left side. So we're just counterposing all of the warrior poses that we did today, all of the crescent lunges, right, by opening up, coming out of flexion and into extension on that left side. So allow your breath to move along the left side of the body. Hmm. Very little muscular effort in this pose. Just let gravity and your breath take over. Allow your bones to get heavy. And then gently pull the belly to the spine. Find a sense of center for a breath in and a breath out with both feet on the ground. Just feel centered, feel neutral. And then on an exhale, both feet to the left. Feet nice and wide still. The gaze might go past your right shoulder, right elbow. And then think of your right knee just giving into gravity. No muscles, just bones dropping. Put the effort in your breath and in letting go.
next breath, sweet and sensual and luscious. And then pull the belly to the spine so that when you bring the legs back, it's to a place of strength, back to center. Feel your feet root into the earth. And have a moment to just feel the spine being centered and neutral. And then bring the knees back into your chest and give them a good squeeze. Bring your forehead towards your knees and squeeze everything in and down to this digestive pose. On, an, on the inhale, open up a little bit, and then on the exhale, squeeze everything in and down. Again, inhale, open up a little. Exhale, squeeze everything in and down. Good. And then rock forward and back. The stomach is one of the organs that we feel really grounded through. As you come up to sit, bring the soles of your feet together, but take them out a little bit wider, uh, a little bit uh, more in front of you, I should say, for Tarasana. So a little bit different than Baddha Konasana. You might gently remove the flesh away, and then I'll show you the profile of the pose because it's a rounded in the upper back pose, but open in the shoulders as the head comes forward. Okay, head is coming towards your feet. You can put a pillow on your feet. You can put a block on your feet a blanket, right? Any time that you can get the head to root in a forward fold or to ground, you're gonna to start to release the mind from its excessive thinking. And forward folds are some of the more grounding poses in yoga. I describe them as the winter poses. They have a downward moving energy. They ask us to look inward, to reflect, like there's nowhere to look in a forward fold but inside. So be with your breath. And allow yourself to gaze in your inner landscape. Again, pulling the belly to the spine, coming up from a sense of strength and stability, the head will be the last thing to arrive. Once the head arrives, roll the shoulders up, back, and down. And next we'll move into Baddha Konasana. So we'll bring the heels together, and then grab your feet and open them up like you're opening up a book. And then I'll show you the profile here as well, as this is quite different to come down. You lengthen the spine, shoulders stay open, so it's more of a flat back pose to come forward. And this might be where you are, and it's beautiful with the hands just right out in front of the feet. If you can come down to the forearms, you'll use gently the forearms pressing down and reaching towards you to reach your heart forward and your hips back. And then if there's an opportunity to go further, you'll go all the way down to the ground but the heart stays open and the shoulders never round. So you know that you've gone too far if the shoulders start to round. Okay, and then an opportunity here to really breathe into those inner thighs, into the groin and the outer hips as well. And just be with yourself and with your breath here. A powerful exhale beyond your regular point of exhalation will empty the belly enough for the heart to move forward. So see if you can play with that. This is not a brawn shape, it's a surrender shape. And so we surrender our strength and move into our breath. over the spine, shoulders roll back. Hmm. So beautiful to come out of poses, no? And then, one of my favorite things, and then 
Use your hands to bring your knees together and give your legs a big squeeze. Sit up nice and tall and breathe in. Just loving yourself here a little bit more. And then start to slowly extend your legs out and in front of you and flex the toes. Again, I, the only reason I remove the flesh away from the sit bones is just so I can feel my sit bones closer to Mother Earth. Knees can soften any amount. Inhale your arms to the sky. Exhale, Paschimottanasana. Seated forward fold. Release the head. My gifts for you at home is to release your feet as well, unless it feels really easy and accessible. If there's any sense of stress in your shoulders or in your neck by holding onto your feet, let that go. And let the shoulders relax and be the example for the hips and the hamstrings to open and to soften as well. Pashimal means west facing pose. And it's said that the west side of the body, the back side of the body, is our spiritual, divine self. And at the front of the body, the east is our facade. It's what we show to the world. And so this pose seeks to meet both. So that what you show to the world is your true divine self, your true nature. So it is not about touching your feet. It's about something much bigger than that. Allow yourself to soften a little bit more into this next luxurious breath. Let your next exhale be deeper. Be that empty vessel that's waiting for something new to arrive. On your next breath in, start to slowly make your way up, nice and easy, there's no rush. And then find a gentle cross-legged seat. Bring your left thumb and index finger together and then place it on your palm. The palm can face up in a gesture of receiving, it can face down in a gesture of grounding, whatever you need more of. And then with your peace sign fingers on your right hand, place your peace sign fingers on your third eye, activate your intuition. Take your thumb over your right nostril and your index finger, uh, your ring finger over your left nostril. Together, let's take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Close your right nostril and breathe in through your left. Close the left nostril and breathe out your right. Inhale right, close, exhale left. Inhale left, close, exhale right. Inhale right, close, exhale left. Inhale left, close, Exhale right. Inhale right. Close. Exhale left. Inhale left. Close. Exhale right. Inhale right. Close. Exhale left. Inhale back, close and pause. Exhale right. Inhale right, close and pause. Exhale left. Let it go and inhale through both nostrils evenly. Exhale and let that breath. Not 
Adi Shodhana is a breath of calming and balancing for the right and left side of the body. You can come to it before sleep or any time that you need to relax more. The offering is to stay here in your seat of meditation or to take Shavasana. And if you're at home, allow your Shavasana to be maybe 15 minutes, right? That is definitely the recommended time for Shavasana. And it's also a time that we normally don't uh, have in a regular class. So you really do have a gift here of Shavasana, of taking a longer Shavasana. And I'll walk you through uh, a little meditation coming into Shavasana before we say goodbye. So, as you lay back, use your breath to scan your body and feel all of the places where your body makes contact with the earth. Right, your heels, your calves, your thighs, your glutes, your hands, your shoulders, your back, and maybe parts of your neck. in so many ways. And then feeling that support, release your glutes. Let them go. Release your ankles so that the feet splay out to the sides. Together we'll take a deep breath right between the shoulder blades. Sip in more breath through the mouth. Hold the breath in. Feel full of life. Before that uncomfortable, start to sip it out through the nose slowly and watch your shoulders melt horizontally across the mat and away from your ears. On your next breath in, feel your neck get long and on your breath out, let your head get heavy. Imagine that the mat is made of mud and that every exhale allows you to sink a little bit deeper into the cool mud of Mother Earth. Allow that mud to begin to embrace every crevice of the body so that you're fully supported in all ways. The work is done, yogis. Breathe into your beautiful life. Namaste.